Hi, for many people, including myself, it's a challenge when we want to analyze data in Python to actually write the pandas code to clean and prepare the data to get it into good shape for analysis. The Data Wrangler is a newish tool from Microsoft that can help us with that. We can use it to generate that pandas code for us. So let's take a look at it. If you'd like to follow along, all the information you need, including a copy of this notebook, there's a link to it in the comments below. I'm in VS Code. I've created a Jupyter Notebook. I've already written a couple of cells of Python code. The first one to import pandas. The second one, which I'm just about to run, is going to load a data from an external CSV file into a Python data frame. Let's go ahead and load that. And what we can see is a couple of things. First of all, because I've installed this add-in, I've got the launch data wrangler button here, and I've also got a couple of rows of my data. Now I need to clean this data in various ways. The first of all is to give some proper column names. The second is that I don't require the uh, rightmost six columns. They're not particularly useful. I need to drop those. The third is this column label two. Uh, that's actually a date, so I'd like to turn it into a date data type, and then I can generate the year from it. Likewise, column one is a price. I would like to change that into an integer. Finally, there's some values here like T and F. I'd like to replace those with more meaningful words like terraced and flat. To do that, I'm going to start off by launching the data wrangler. Let's take a quick look at the user interface. Right in the middle here, we have got a view of our data, some of the rows, and all of the 16 columns. On the left hand side, we've got all the operations that we can do. Some of these are grouped together, so I can expand schema to see the various operations there. On the right hand side over here, we've got some basic information about our data set. It's got slightly over 100,000 rows and the 16 columns. The cleaning steps here, bottom left, will list our steps as we generate them, and this bottom middle section will show us the generated pandas code. Let's do our first cleaning operation. We want to rename the first 10 columns. I've come along to this column zero. I'll expand, I have expanded schema, and I'm going to click on a rename column. And I'm going to call this column the transaction ID. Once I've done that, it shows me both uh, before and after. I'm happy with that, so I'll click on apply. I can also come to the column header, click on the three dots, and choose rename column. This column I'm going to rename to our price. I want to rename eight more columns. I will just pause the video while I do that. Now I have renamed all those columns, at least the first 10 of them, transaction date, postcode, property type, and so on. We can see that there's several more cleaning steps. If we want to click on a particular step, it will show us the generated code as of that step. And we can click on other steps, and we can even have a look at the code that's generated for all the steps that we've just done. It's a good way, actually, of learning pandas code to look at the generated code here. Next job is to remove the columns at the end. I don't need them. To do that, I'll go into schema, into drop columns. I'll choose the columns that I want to drop, which is all the six at the end. And then I'll come along and apply that. Now we can see that we don't have the columns at the end. We finish with street and we've got an operation here to drop all the columns. Our property type column here has five values. The single letter codes T for terraced, F for flat. I'd like to replace those with more meaningful words. So let's do that. I'm going to go into find and replace and I'm going to choose find and replace. We're on, on the property type column. I'm going to replace the old F value with flat. As I do that, we can see what's going to happen. That's a great preview. I'm happy with that. Again, I'll apply. Likewise, I'm going to replace T with terrace, O with other, S with semi, D with detached. I will pause the recording while I do that. And now we can see our property type column has much more meaningful values, terrace, flat, detached, and so on. And if we want to have a quick look at the code generated, there it is. 
Now I'd like to change the data types of a couple of my columns, price and transaction date. Let's click on price and we'll go into schema and we'll change the column type. It's an object and let's make it a whole number. I'm going to do the same for transaction date. Transaction date is an object again and this time I'm going to make it a date time and apply that. Later on I'm going to summarize this data by the year of the transaction. To do that I'm going to need a new column called transaction year. I'll click on new column by example and I've chosen my transaction data as my target column. I've got something called derived column. I'll call that transaction year. And what I'm going to do now is add some examples of the results that I want to see. So this date is the 14th of April 2003. So if I enter 2003 in the result, and what it's done is it's put in lots of the examples. The rule seems correct. It seems to be extracting the year from the date. And if we have a look at the code that it's done just down here, we can see that's exactly right. So I'm going to click on apply that. And we have our transaction year. I've now completed all the cleaning operations I want to. I can now come and look at the code that's been generated. And here we have it from the beginning. We're renaming those columns. We are dropping the columns in this line 34. We are changing the uh, values. And then we're changing the column data types of price, transaction date. And finally, we're inserting a new column transaction year. I've just clicked on back to notebook from Data Wrangler and it's come back to the notebook. This is the cell that it's created, it's generated. It's created a function called clean data that renames and then drops some columns. It replaces value in the property type column. It changes the types of price and date to integer and date time respectively. And finally uh, creates a new uh, transaction year column. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run that and what we will see is the first couple of rows of our transform data. Now let's use Data Wrangler to do a second transformation. We're going to take this transform data, we're going to group it at the transaction year and property type level, and we're going to sum the price to get the total market value and the count of the transaction ID to get the number of sales. Let's go into Data Wrangler again. We can see that we've got our previously transformed data at the top. So let's go into this time group by an aggregate and we are going to group by our new transaction year column and our property type column. And we're going to add a couple of aggregations. One is simply going to be a count of the transaction ID that will be the number of sales and another aggregation will be to take our price and to sum it up to give us our total market value. It's showing us a preview of what we can see. That looks good. So I'm just going to click on apply. And here we have our data. If I move this down, better to see it. We've got a row for every year and every property type with the uh, number of sales, transaction count, and the total market value, the sum of the price. Again, if we want to, we can have a look at the pandas code that's been generated. I hope that this video has been useful to you. If it is, do please like and subscribe. Again, all the links that you need to install Data Wrangler are in the comments below and other references as well. Those of you that know Power BI and Power Query might have a sense of deja vu. It follows a similar approach to Power Query in Generate the Code, except this, of course, is Python and Pandas code. Power Query is immensely popular tool, and I have found this Data Wrangler tool to be very useful, and I hope that you will as well. Thank you for watching.